gentlemen, uh, this following contest. Anticipation. Chris, if we went up the back room there, yeah. Nothing would happen. Because I'd ruin let's, you let's so not, bad, let's yeah. Let's get ahead of ourselves. Here. I'd mess your head up. You're a time coat. What is going to happen? I'll tell you. It's going to be a battle. Those butterflies, the nerves in your stomach, when you leave the dressing room, they turn into dragons. Those dragons get bigger and bigger. They get stronger. Those dragons will breathe fire. Are you ready? Are you ready? Come on! This next contest is sanctioned under the British Boxing Board of Control with supervisor Robert Smith and judges Phil Edwards, Victor Lachlan and Terry O'Connor. From promoter Ben Shalama Boxer, Wasserman Boxing and Sky Sports Boxing, live from the Motor Point Arena in Cardiff, we are live with anticipation for Chris Eubank Jr. and Liam Williams. This is your main event. Please welcome, on his way into the ring, the machine, Liam Williams! Welcome his opponent to the ring, Chris Eubank Jr. So just as his legendary father used to say that, Going out on Chris Eubank Jr. now enters the lion's den, the dragon's lair, and this cauldron in Cardiff. He's intelligent, he's calm, he's assured, and he still oozes confidence at 32. But not only will he defeat Liam Williams, but this will be the year. Thank <laughs> you. 
go first to the blue corner. In white with pink and blue trim, standing five feet ten inches tall and weighed in 11 stone five pounds. As a professional, his record stands 23 victories, 18 by a knockout against three losses to a single draw. From Clinic Vale, Rhonda, Wales, the British ranked number two middleweight, the machine. And his opponent in the red corner, wearing the red shorts and standing five feet, 11 inches tall, and weighed in at 11 stone, six pounds. As a professional, his record stands 31 career victories, 23 by knockout to two losses. He is the British ranked number one middleweight from Brighton, England. Introducing Chris Eubank. Uh, Junior! The wait is over. Wales hosts British boxing expects after all the needle, the talk, the predictions through injury, postponements, and an ex Eubank trainer in Adam Booth, now with Williams, many subplots and genuine excitement as our leading middleweights lock horns in a tantalizing treat to kick off this fabulous February of boxing. Eubank Jr. in the sparkling red and the white, blue and pink of Liam Williams, the hard man from the Ronda Valley. And what support Enzo, your countryman has. Yeah, fantastic atmosphere. It has been all night, every time he's been shown on the screen, the crowd's applauded, uh, they've gone mad, and you can just feel the electricity in the earth tonight. This is a big, big fight. You're already both men trying to establish the jabs. William is finding the jab to the body. Good job there from him. Again, Eubank looking for the jab to the body too. Both guys trying to suss their distance out here. packed into this Motor Point Arena, thousands of fans heavily behind Liam Williams, but Chris Eubank Jr. doesn't mind one little bit, he says he'll have an answer to everything, whatever Williams throws at him, but Alan Booth, a canny trainer in the corner, what has he come up with? I, th I think Williams is boxing here on the outside, you know, I think they expected, maybe Eubank expected Williams to come out aggressively and to be rushed forward, but he's setting things up, he's patient here, he's calculated, he, everything's working off that jab. Well, remember, the dude defeats in Eubank's career to Billy Joe Saunders and George Groves, who's here tonight, who outboxed Eubank. And I think maybe, Enzo, they're going to mix it up, the Williams team, with trying to utilise the jab cleverly and come in pockets of fire yeah, and what will you man junior do yeah liam liam has got an underrated jab he's going to keep that jab in his face offset and every time new bang moves to attack a little jab will come off new bang needs to draw liam into a fight he needs to get into his game the last couple of fights new bang for the first couple of rounds try to box like roy jones you can't box like roy jones you can't mimic someone like roy jones so he needs to get to his game draw liam into a fight where his upper catch is relentless with a good shot a shot there from Eubank Jr. And Williams, well, he was going in with a good jab, but he just got caught and he's blinking profusely. And that was against the run of the first round. And Eubank Jr. now senses blood. 14 seconds left in the first, and what a dramatic start. Just when Williams seemed to be getting it going behind his jab, he's caught, he's floored, and now what a shift in the plot. Again, the court again. He's hurt again, and the underestimated power of Eubank. Well, how about that for a first round? 
A great deal of talk in the build-up about Liam Williams' weight as well. He said he felt super strong last night. He packed it back on, but how difficult was it for him to make 11-6? For Chris Eubank Jr., it's more natural. He's been up at super middleweight where he didn't feel as strong. So a fascinating beginning to this middleweight duel between Eubank Jr. and Williams. The jab ends though. Yeah, he's back there. He was doing well in the first round. He sort of found his range a bit quicker than uh, you might do now. But this is, this is high level boxing. One mistake, you paid the ultimate price. And you know, he paid the price. He jumped in, he got caught with a stiff, solid jab. And that, that, that jab of him coming in doubled the power as well. Jab to the body from Williams. Back to the Adam Boob tactics and what's Roy Jones Jr. come up with. They've got this chemistry over the last couple of years out in Pensacola on the farm as the Welsh fans try to get behind Williams again. Eubank Jr. He's looking, he's looking for them pot shots. He's looking to catch Liam coming in, which is which is pretty much Roy Jones' what he used to do. Hand nice and low, ready to snap the jab or throw the hook as someone's coming in. Liam needs to start thinking that just a little bit more. I know he's jabbing to the body, but I like to see him thinking a little bit more. Maybe get you back to throw first. the speed of the counter punches here from Eubank again here with these shots he's not seeing them and they're hurting him he just looks razor sharp tonight uh, Eubank Jr you know, he's catching the only shots coming in he's in and out his jab looks spot on and he looks so cool and relaxed as well very, Eubank Jr yeah very relaxed and that's where the power's coming from just relax and plant his feet and just Stamping that jab in, stiff jab. He's looking a different class, Chris Eubank Jr. I think he's been angered by the fact that people felt he's not worthy of world title opportunities again, but on this performance, he very much is. So far, so good for Team Eubank. Trying to get his legs going again, the warrior from Wales, the 29-year-old Liam Williams in fight number 28. It's the 34th for Chris Eubank Jr. He's had good wins, the one over James DeGale may be the best, but this would be the career performance that will propel him into surely a world title shot this summer. At the moment, Liam's just struggling with a little bit of extra speed. And like I said, with the way he's snapping those shots from the hip, they're hard to read, they're hard to see. You know, he can turn it into an uppercut, he can turn it into a hook. And what Eubank's doing at the moment, he's just taking those little step backs as Liam's coming in. He, he's playing a counter-punching game. Liam's attacking, and he's just making him draw on the shots. Yeah. I mean, he started quite well, Williams. He settled down, he was jabbing the body. He looked like he was, you know, a good, positive start. But then that, the knockdown just seemed to change everything. Now he feels, now that Eubank knows he can hurt him. He's got that patience, he's just sitting back. Picking for that shot, looking for that counter, trying to time him on the way in. Yeah, the knock, the knockdown come from a little rush. You know, Liam was boxing well, he was keeping good distance, jamming the body, jamming the head, you know, making new bang thing. As soon as he rushed in, he got caught and has changed the fight. He's very fast with his jab tonight as well, Eubank Jr. He's been saying all week how great he feels now with that extra time with Roy Jones Jr. during the pandemic, and he's had such a, a tough year as well with the, the tragic loss of his brother Sebastian, and he's gone back to, to Roy Jones. I think he's found sanctuary with Jones, and he respects him because of everything he's achieved.
And glad Liam's boxing, I guess, for this round, keeping his distance, not making too many mistakes, not jumping in, no clearing his head a little bit. He got two knockdowns in two rounds. You know, he needs to clear that head a little bit. So he's doing, he's doing the right thing. He's keeping out of distance. He's not rushing in. He's not falling in. Not giving you back Junior that opportunity to catch him that quick counter. No, exactly. He just needs to settle down now, doesn't he? Just get clear his head and build his confidence back. Get that jab going. Right hand from Williams, but he just slips and the balance is all over as he bangs his chest and says, come on then. There's the anger. And is that what Adam Booth says needs to be controlled? Yeah, you know, I spoke to Adam there, little key words, and, you know, he would do it as much as you like in the gym. In a fight, it's different atmosphere. Liam's a proud, proud man. He's been put down twice. He really wants to get that back. But I'm glad he'd come out this wrong like this. He kept his distance. He had made no mistakes. You know, Eubank's still, uh, Eubank's still boxing well, catching little counters, but he's not catch, catching with the same velocity as he's done in the last round. The posturing from... Eubank Jr. in front of his dad at ringside. Fainting Williams, better with the jab. But Eubank trying to get another couple of right hands off, and he catches him again. And Mark Lyson has to swing, but right mid round, and Roy Jones Jr. is in there, and there's some aggro here. Mark Lyson reading the riot act in front of this passionate crowd. Everybody wants to see boxing back in a big way. And the Welsh fans coming to get behind their man from Clinic Vale, Liam Williams. But two knockdowns in the first here and Eubank says, come on, then he left himself wide open. He's got a great chin, but he can't be taking uh, no, but you see, decisions Eubank, like that. No, Eubank's trying to go him in, and he's looking for that quick counter left hook as Williams comes in with the right hand. I think, that, I think that's the plan. That's what he worked on from the start. You, know, you can see him looking for that check left up from the first round. So, you know, I think Matt was totally right. He's trying to get Liam down. He's trying to get him a goal in. So he's catching him. Quick counter. Williams trying to up the ante here. Is he going to have to drag Eubank somewhere deep? We know Eubank is so strong and never been halted and down again. The same another shot. shot and it was beautifully timed by Eubank and he knows it. They've worked on that and that's the third knockdown within four rounds and Liam Williams just can't cope with the superior skill and speed here of Eubank Jr. Yeah, I think it's the speed that's struggling with him, though. That better shot there from Williams, but yeah, I think it's the speed he's struggling with here. And the, and the timing as well, that timing and shots coming in. Yeah, more accuracy. Brilliant from Eubank Jr. Again, trying to goad Williams in. He wants him to walk onto another. He says, come on! You know, that's three 10-8 rounds now as well. Eubank can afford to be even more patient, which means Williams is going to have to take more chances, which means he's going to walk on to more shots. So, you know, it's not a good situation for Williams right now. The dream chance turning into a nightmare here for Liam Williams in front of his home crowd. He's a proud man. He's a tough man. And he has the qualities as well as we've seen, but... He's being outclassed, Enzo. Yeah, he, he, Liam, Liam is a really underrated boxer, but that knockdown has changed everything from the start. And now with the, th the three knockdowns, he's having to push. If he wants to win the fight, he has to push the fight, which leaves himself more open for Eubank's game plan, which looks to the fact that he's trying to catch him coming in. That's what his power is developing. Talking to him in there as well, Eubank Jr. Might get a ticky off from Mark Lyson in a minute, but everything else just going according to the... Jones Jr. script because people said could he do what Roy Jones does no he's a different fighter but he's executing the plan perfectly yeah I'd be like you say the fact that he's so with the 10-8 rounds now and the fact that he has to chase the fight he has to take risks he's going to play into Eubank's hands even more well, sizzling action so far 
in this middleweight battle. Eubank Jr. standing strong and now shifts it up. Look at that card, 40-33, three 10-8 rounds on match card. He's in dire, dire straits. Williams, what does he do? And Eubank just trying to go through the motions here and on the front foot looking for the uppercuts too, Enzo. Yeah, he is. Like you said, from the start, I think the plan is with Len drawing Liam on the shot, he's throwing little feints, he's throwing little movements, he's got that hand by his side, so he's, he's enticing Liam to come in. He's enticing Liam to attack and he's throwing in quick shoulders, uh, quick, quick uh, counters, doubling the power on his shot as Liam's coming in. Very smart work by you, and Liam's having to chase the fight now, yeah. which is playing more into his hands. And that's the, that's the last thing he wanted to be doing, you know, walking into someone who can counter punch him, who's got a bit of superior speed. It's more, it's more that timing for me, you know, he's set, he's set his stall out, he wants to time Liam coming in, and as he's doing, with him up the he's throwing him from the head, Liam's struggling to see. Not, not, the, not a Chris, not a Eubank boxes like his father, but he's got that same attitude, the crowd booing him, like when Eubank boxed in Germany against Rokajani, he embraced it, he loved it, I think, I think Chris's first loss was against Thompson, when he actually got cheered going into the ring. You know, that was, he, lived, he fed off the crowd, and Newbank Jr. is feeding off the crowd tonight. Yep, loves the hostility, so comfortable in his own skin, so confident, and whipping in these uppercuts. Williams trying to negate the distance, throwing his own hooks, but Newbank just wants him to walk onto one. Yeah, really trying to walk him onto those uppercuts, really bending his knees. Newbank and driving a lot of power through with, with those. There's an aura as well, isn't there, about Junior tonight, as though he's doing everything in his own zone. And Williams just has to throw caution to the wind, really, if he's going to claw his way back into even having a chance of forcing a knockout win. He's seven behind on your card, and we haven't even gone through five. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't, he wouldn't want to have the five rounds having to be chasing the fight, but that's exactly the position he finds himself in there. And whatever game plan they had coming in, it's all changed now. It's, a, it's, all, it's all about pure heart from Liam now. He has to push the pace. He has to, he has to be, take chances. You know, if he wants to win this fight, he has to put you by under a lot, a lot of pressure. The jabs from Williams, and he's got plenty of heart. We know that. Plenty of the Eubank family here to cheer him on. Sister Emily and also Harlem, his cousin who had a win earlier on tonight. He's undefeated. There's something in the genes, Matt. <laughs> I, I really like to see Liam now start throwing a lot more feints. You know, he needs to start getting Eubank to throw first. Because at the moment, when he's throwing first, he's getting counted. So just pop a couple of feints, make Eubank throw first, then come in behind with a double jab. So when Williams attacks, he really commits to it, and yes. that's why that's added to the power of Eubanks' counters. Really showing the bottle we know he's all about, the Welshman. Blood coming from the left eye. Being counted at times, having to pick himself up off the floor in rounds one, two, and four. But still, he comes forward. Trying to generate something. He had a good round the last round. Yeah, he had a good round. He had a good round this round as well. Good round. And he's, uh, Liam's, got, Liam's got very good boxing IQ. But unfortunately for him at the moment, he's has to change everything. He has to, he has to force the fight. But I'd like, just like to see him come in with a few feints. He needs Eubank to throw first so he can come in behind and sort of counter Eubank. Yeah, agree. Totally agree, Dave. You know, if, he, if, Eubank, if he can fight Eubank, get him to...
to commit, slip outside it, then come in. He's safe then. And once Eubanks already let his hands go, that's the time when uh, Liam Williams can look to cl close the distance. He, he needs to be an aggressive counter puncher. He needs to come forward, he needs to throw them points. And like you said, get Eubank to throw first and counter Eubank, which is easier said than done at the moment. Looking for a slashing right hand, Eubank. Williams with the jab to the body. I mean, you don't have those two. Excellent fights with Liam Smith and go in with Demetrius Andre. If you're not a top-level fighter, which Liam Williams is, the question mark is who can go on and become a world champion? And at the moment, on what we're seeing, it's Eubank Jr. who's going to get that opportunity. But not even halfway through. Let's see Liam Williams step to his right a little bit more and try, maybe try and force Chris Eubank to move the other way as well. Yeah, Good work from Williams. No, Chris is comfortable moving to his left. I see Williams move to his right and try and force Eubank to move the other way. Spot on, Matt. Seems to be just following a little bit at the moment. Cutting that ring down, making that ring small. Cutting off Eubank's movement. He's sort of following. Adam Booth, who had one plan before this. But three knockdowns in the first third of the 12 rounder. Changes it all. However, Liam Williams has had a decent last couple of rounds, and he goes into the second half of this highly anticipated middleweight duel with Chris Eubank Jr. Still there, still throwing, still thinking, and still hoping. Yep. Everything's up that left hand from Eubank. Everything's up that jab, off the jab, left hook, the left uppercut. Try and force him round the other way. Not nice and just telling. Liam Williams to watch the head, and we've got a lot of talk from Chris Eubank Jr. how Williams is a dirty fighter. Haven't seen that though, we've seen pretty clean stuff as he tries a right hand, and Eubank comes back with an uppercut that just misses. Look at Williams trying to get to him. He, he sort of got that angry move now, and, and to be honest, he needs that sort of move, but he's got to be controlled a, a, a little bit. He's got to control that anger, because if he starts falling in again, if he starts lunging in, he's going to get caught again, but he does need to put the pressure on. On the back foot, Chris Eubank Jr. Utilising the ring, waiting for the uppercuts, and Williams cranking up the heat and the pressure. That's what Liam needs to do, he needs to get close to the U-Bank, but he, you know, he needs to tuck his hands up, come in, throw some feints, get in close, rough, rough U-Bank, I know U-Bank's tough as nails, you know, he's always showed that over the years, but th this is what Liam needs to do. He can't give him that distance, that space, that opportunity to catch him as he's coming in. I think he's just got to cut the ring up a little bit more too, at times he's following U-Bank around a little bit too much here. It looks like he's going to catch him up against the ropes. And then Eubank finds a way. Very good on his feet. The Brighton boxer. Nice right hand there from Eubank, just a counter over the top. Working hard, Mark Lyson, the referee. Yeah, he's, especially his last couple of rounds with Liam's trying to get close. You know, like you said, he's having to force the fight, he's having to push the pace. He has to, he has to, you know, it's a war of attrition for Liam now. He needs to give it everything he's got. He needs to drag Eubank into a fight, he needs to rough him up. Take him to the trenches, utilise this crowd and his own belief, Liam Williams. As he tries to pin you back, and it's getting rough in there now. And he, he's got to be careful, Williams. Might need another point. Mm. He probably needs a knockout already, Williams, but tough round. See there, not much in punches landed, but it is the knockdowns that are making the difference on the card. However, how many of the last three is Liam Williams got? Because on Matt's unofficial card, I'm seeing three, five, six, and seven, all to Liam Williams. I think that makes it a four deficit with five to go. Yeah, I mean, by the knockdowns, 
you know, it's been a close fight, hasn't it? It's been, it's been a very close fight. The, the, the knockdowns have been the difference, you know, but Liam's had to change his style, he's had to change his tactics, probably have to change his plan when they come up with. But he is dragging himself back into this fight. He won the last three. He'd made things a bit tougher for you, man. He's not giving him the space. And what I what I found as well, last couple of rounds, he's been taking shots better as well. He might try to plant his feet there, but Williams is having a right old wrestle with him. Trying to utilize that strength. Is he strong at middleweight? He seemed so happy after the weigh-in. I think he wanted to. Tried on with Eubank Jr. right there and then on Friday night. Had to wait another 24 hours. He's been burning for this fight, Enzo, and you can see it. Yeah, he have, you know, he's been he's been quite calm all week, which I've been sure I've been shocked with. But you know, tonight now the crowd here, you know, he's he, he did start boxing well, but that one split second he rushed, he got caught. That's just changed the whole fight, changed the whole game plan, especially the second round and the fourth round knockdowns. You know, he's having to chase the fight, he's having to put a lot more pressure on Eubank than I think they intended. I think the plan was to box. That's all out the window now. You know, I thought the first half there, I thought it was just a balanced thing. He walked onto a shot, he timed him. But actually, there was a shot after that, which the, and the legs stiffened the Liam Williams, so he definitely was hurt in that first round. Maybe he just got a fact was just getting caught cold and recovered, because he has seen like he's been taking shots back in the last couple of rounds. Uppercut from Eubank Jr. Yeah, good shot. Next gen, as always, on the back of those trunks. Yeah. With his children's names. But again, it's all it's all coming from the left side of Eubank. The jab, the left the right hand from Williams. Eubank postures, but this is some grit and determination and forcing his way back into this, the Welshman. Yeah, you know, I never doubted Liam for a second, the, the heart he's got, the determination he's got. He wanted to win this fight, he wants to do big things in boxing. You know, he's, he's having to claw his way back, and he has. Now he's annoyed about a clash of heads. Swelling beneath the eyes. Eubank still pretty fleet of foot, but... How many of these last three or four rounds has he won? <laughs> Another thing to round for Liam Williams, I think, who's the busier of the two. Just look at Matt's unofficial card. He's given Liam Williams the last four. Just looking behind me, our talk sport colleagues. Andy Clark's given Liam Williams only a couple of rounds in the fight. Spencer Oliver, pretty much everything to Eubank Jr. You put the knockdowns in as well. It is a mountain to climb, but on your card, it's three points the difference. There's four rounds to go. How are you seeing it? A bit wider, Enzo? Uh, to be honest, uh, not, not much wider. I think about um, giving Liam three rounds, you know, he's throwing himself back into things. He's, he's pushing a fight. And, you know, those knockdowns have changed the fight. Those knockdowns have changed the, the context of the fight, the actual approach of the fight. And but for Eubank Jr., it hasn't changed much because he's still got the same game plan. But Liam's boxing really well last few rounds. Yeah, Liam's had to use up a lot of energy these last few rounds, though, as well, where Eubank just seems to be sitting back here. He's got that big lead. I think he's conserving energy for a big, strong finish as well, perhaps. Hunting Eubank all around the ring, utilising the ropes. and He's got lovely movement, hasn't he, Junior? Yeah, very, very light on his feet. Yeah. He's going both ways. He's, pre he's predominantly going to his left most of the time. But Liam yeah. needs to start cutting that ring off. And if he starts cutting that ring off, he can make Eubank step to the right and catch him with the hook coming in as well. Good shot. Good shot. And a good shot again from Williams. Again, another good round here from Williams so far. He's back in Eubank up. He's finding the better shots. I mean, it really is a mustering comeback after the three knockdowns in the first half of the fight.
Just, uh, just an example there. He really, he made you back throw a jab, and he can stay straight back in with a double jab. That's more of what he needs to do. Get you back to throw first. He's showing a lot of things in the morning. He's showing a lot of movement. He's, he's, he's sort of making you back think a bit more. Good shot again, by Liam. Yeah, those right hands beginning to work for Liam Williams. A little bit more regularity, and every time he gets close, the crowd rally. Getting a real ticking off, but no points off. Rough at times. As you'd expect with these two. Yeah, it's a, it's a rough fight, and Liam needs to make it rough, and he is making it rough. You know, he's, he's throwing himself back into it. He can't, he can't give Eubank any any space, any time in. But he can't make mistakes like that. Yeah. to go I mean it would be an impossible comeback if he could get anything out of this surely still a knockdown or a knockout lead in Enzo yeah, I never thought he'd fight see the fifth round at one point you know he's done he's done amazing to get back to where he is to be actually in the fight to be on the verge of not, not winning a fight but on the verge of clawing it back and it shows after all the trash talking and the hype and the needle and the build-up these two have wet themselves into the best shape possibly, mentally and physically. Yeah, I don't think there was any doubt about that, though. We knew they both would be. So much on the line here. Must win fight for both men. I really like the fact that Liam's just thrown a couple more feints now. He's really... You know, just little feints with his feet, little feints with his head. He's making the Uban throw first more, more now. At the, at the beginning, I that first throw. At the first four rounds, he was lunging in and showing shots, again caught coming in. He had changed his plan a little bit, he's still putting the pressure on, but he's doing it in a different way. Certainly not look nearly as comfortable, has he, Junior? That swagger that he did in the first half of the fight, the first four or five rounds. In the first four, four, first four or five rounds, everything was going right for him, he was catching Liam coming in, Liam's changed up. You know, he may not look what, he, the, what he's done is different, but he has. Little subtle movements with his feet, little subtle movements with his head, just making Eubank Jr. think that a little bit more, making him throw first, coming in behind uh, the shots of Eubank, and he's boxing really well. That bruise getting worse under the right eye of Liam Williams, really swelling up, purple in colour. Won't deter the Welshman from trying to wrestle this back when it looked completely hopeless. It, it, it certainly did at one point, but I'm really pleased the way he's changed up and he's making you bank think that a little bit. You know, I, I still like to see him cut that ring off a little bit more, just shorten the ring, make that space a little bit smaller for you, bank. Yeah, enormous credit and respect for Liam Williams for doing what he's done in the last five or six rounds. Yeah, completely. The fight looked like he was, you know, they had no hope after four rounds, three knockdowns. It looked like it was almost the last cause. It was, it was, a, it was hard to see a, a way back for him, really, unless he got a, a scored a few knockdowns or a knockout himself. But he's, uh, you know, he really has, in my, in my eyes anyway, won the last five rounds. And you know, even this round here is, he's had a good round. It was a good right hand from Eubank went in, and again he's trying. That jab from the Booth plan is. Worked at times. And look, he smiles at Junior and says, come on then, I'm still right in front of you. Maybe I can eat this out. But the gap has certainly closed. And when it looked like it was all over for Liam Williams, he's stuck in there. He's straight out to centre ring, but he's only got a couple of rounds to do something about the deficit. If it was a 15-round fight, maybe differently. Looking behind me, Gareth A. Davis and the team. They've got you back three up, three or four. You've got him two up, Enzo. And Matt's got him two up as well with two to go. Could he force a draw here? Liam Williams or you back finish strong as he left something in the tank? It's been, it's been, with the, with the rounds we've been giving Liam, the 
they haven't been cons um, conclusive rounds. There's been a couple there which are close, so it de depends what you actually like. But for me, he's two rounds behind, he's got two rounds to go, he can force a draw. So it could be four or five rounds at Eubank. I mean, we know the 10 or 8 rounds are what they are. Yes, exactly. You know, it's some some judges like the aggressive, not some judges like the counter punching. So it depends what you like. For me, like I said, Liam's two rounds behind. He needs these two rounds, maybe a knockdown, which I don't see him getting because Newbank's constantly riding them shots. He's taking the power out of the shots. But Liam's working well. He's changed his tactics. He worked well. He made Newbank think a little bit more. But the fight's still all, not over yet. Yeah, I think Eubanks has landed some good shots, but I just don't think he's landed enough of them the last few mm. rounds. It's, it's very sporadic here and there, where uh, Liam's been consistent, he's been constant, he's been pressuring, he's been pushing him back, he's been landing some good stiff jabs, some nice right hands, and he's been forcing the pace. Shot from Eubank Jr. And trying to become a bit more aggressive here in the 11th round. Williams just throwing himself on him, crowding him. I don't know whether Liam was hurt for something then. So he seemed, he seemed to really want to hold on. Yeah, looking for the upper cover as well, and down he goes, oh, Williams. And in the 11th round, and it's been counted, and Liam Williams is furious about it, but that, that is surely curtains for his chances even to get it back. That could be it. Yeah. He pushed me, he said to the ref, but no good now. And that came at totally the wrong time. However you've scored the last few, Williams certainly has had so much to say in this fight. But four knockdowns, it's impossible now without a knockout. And Eubanks always had that solid chin. What does Williams do? Throw everything at him? He's got to, he wants to win this fight. He got a round and a half, a less than a round and a half, so basically he's just got one round to do, so he's literally got to get everything he got. Going to need a knockout. He needs a knockout now, I think, Williams, to win this. 100%. Ever so brave and gallant and skillful to get himself back into this in any way when it looked totally impossible. What an absorbing, and at times stunning, and at times strange 12 rounder here in Cardiff. Full of everything. We've had four knockdowns. Liam Williams has been on the end of every single one of those, but he's won rounds. He's kept himself in it as much as possible. And on Matt's unofficial card, he's three behind. Chin. And same with Enzo. Others might have it slightly wider. I mean, it's the knockdowns, really, that's cost him. Because some of the knockdowns in rounds, Liam was actually winning the fight. He was mm. actually winning the rounds, but obviously the knockdown takes over. And now we start to ask the questions. Are Will they become back? world champions off the back of this? Will Chris? Quite, po quite possibly, uh, I say quite possibly, it's still, a, still an up uphill struggle, but, you know, he's boxed well, it's been a great, good performance by him, it's been a good performance by Liam, let's run it back again, I'd love to see it again. Yeah, absolutely, I'd love to see it again, I mean, he's, he's pressed the fight, he's forced the fight, I mean, Eubanks landed the better shots, he scored the knockdowns, but... It hasn't Liam, been, Liam landed been one, a lot more yeah, of them. Yeah, it hasn't been one-way traffic, apart from the knockdowns, the, the fight has been pretty good. He looked quite sparkling in four or five of the first rounds of the fight. Chris Eubank Jr. At times he's switched off, but Liam Williams has switched on and some really good use of the jab and crowding him and non-stop pressure, but calculated as well from Williams. Yeah, I mean, he's, he, he, he's coming in here nicely behind the jab, he's working the body, he's pushing, he's forcing the pace, he's putting shots together, he's landing shots as well, landed some good one-twos, but he just walked on to, you know, those couple of those check left hooks or the stiff jabs which caused the knockdowns, and it's really cost him in this fight. Last minute of this 12 round, and many people felt it will go the whole way. Right hand from Williams. But he just... 
gets out of the way, doesn't he? Yeah. Back to he rides them. He's done it the whole fight. He's constantly moving, he's constantly on the back foot. He's totally taking taking a power out of Liam's shot. Now, some of these shots, if Liam caught Eubank with Eubank coming in like he caught Liam, you know, it's a different story, but he's, he's been very smart. He knows he knows he's going to fight. Like, best show for him now, playing with the crowd, playing with Liam. Yeah, the Welsh crowd booing Eubank Jr. He'll love it. The shuffle. And uh, all the bad blood between them. Let's hope we get an embrace at the end because it's been a really great effort from both of these two middleweights. Eubank Jr. with the four knockdowns. Liam Williams with the tenacity. With coming back from the brink and pushing Eubank all the way. There is no meeting at the bow. Junior takes the applause. He knows he's won it, which he has. How wide are the cards? How much credit will they give Liam Williams for what he did? But the right man is celebrating. This bout goes the distance 12 rounds. And we go to your judges for the decision. Victor Lockling, Phil Edwards, Terry O'Connor scored about 116, 109, 116, 108, 117, 109. Declaring your winner by unanimous decision, Chris Eubank Jr. Fairly wide and all three, as expected by the four knockdowns that Eubank Jr. scored, and some of those rounds were maybe. Enter a mat, led towards Williams. The judges might have done Eubank. One or two of them were close. A rightful winner, Chris Eubank. Chris, congratulations. You've come to the Dragon's Den and you have conquered. Your immediate reaction? Happy with the performance. You know, uh, I wanted to teach this man a lesson. He'd said some, some very uh, menacing things to me uh, leading up to this fight and... I wanted to punish him, you know. I actually saw th thought about it before I got in the ring, and I was like, I don't even want to knock this guy out in the t in the first round, you know. I I want I want to punish him. Congratulations. Okay, thank you. I want to punish him. I want to you know I want to teach him a lesson, you know. I I want to get people like that out, out of boxing, you know. You, you saw the fight, headbutts, um, headlocks, all, all types of crazy stuff. I'm surprised he didn't get disqualified, but I took it like a man and I punished him like I said I was going to do. Um, it was a fun night. Strange fight of two halves, almost. Uh, very strong start from you and a, and a strong finish at the end. Yeah, well, you know, people always tell me I can't box. You know, apparently all I can do is come forward and I have no jab. So, you know, I thought, you know what, let me, uh, let me show some of these critics a different side to, to Eubank Jr. A little bit of, uh, you know, Roy Jones Jr. sauce added to it. You know, see something different, you know, get the fans excited. Roy won't thank me for saying it, but let me ask you, having had him down in the first, the second and the fourth, could you have put your foot to the floor and forced a stoppage? Was there a danger you were letting him back into the fight? No, there was no danger. I, you know, I, I could have, if I had stepped on the gas at any point in that fight, he would have been gone. But, you know, he needed to be taught a lesson. Um, I didn't want to give him the easy way out. I wanted him to let him know that there's levels to the game. And, you know, and don't go out there, you know, being a big mouth to guys who you can get hurt against. You know, he thought he was something he wasn't. Chris, you came, you saw, you conquered. Well done. Thank you. Appreciate it.